Hey lads. Uh, this is a little analysis of Nisha's recent Meepo game. In general, it's a really good game for Meepo. He doesn't care about um, anyone really except for Shadow Fiend. Shadow Fiend's got the buff to his ult uh, that, that causes a fear now, which is really good against Meepo. It used to be that, you know, it hurt if he managed to ult on top of you, but like now you just straight up like, end up running away with all your Meepos and uh, leaves you really susceptible to dying. Uh, so, 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 yeah, Shadowfin's Shadow been buffed to be better against Meepo, but the rest really doesn't matter. Beast Master has no way to get away from Meepo if he gets on top of him. Faceless Void, his chrono is way too long on cooldown now. That got nerfed so many times. Uh, the Meepo is really, really good uh, against against them now. I mean, he always was, because you can't time walk away when you're, you're rooted by uh, Meepo's net. So Meepo will usually just... I mean, he doesn't even need a blink for the most part. He can just, if he just gets one net off, uh, Void is just simply dead. Oracle is going to be able to save someone from Meepo this game, which is pretty good. But he's not, he has no offensive capabilities to really kill Meepo. He can use his Q and root Meepo, which stops him from being able to poof away if they catch him. So, like, it is helpful. The problem is, is that as Meepo gets farmed, this is all very ideal and is playing as though you're going to be picking Meepo off a lot. And the reality is, Meepo's gonna get items and he's gonna kill all of you. Oracle's not gonna be able to stop Meepo from basically killing him in one second. And then you have Enchantress, who is, I mean, she just doesn't really have anything. It's, it's not great. So, uh, this game, he starts with Quelling branches and two circlets. Those two circlets are going to build into wraith bands. That's pretty much the standard Meepo build. Um, most people's most people got three three wraith bands. You just get good stats. I've seen some weird Meepos buying dragon lance again, but that's kind of a dead item since people decide stacking like braces or wraith bands because they're just so much more stat efficient than a dragon lance nowadays. And Meepo doesn't really want to be building it into a pike. Uh, but f for the most part, with pro players, they have stayed away from it. The very standard build on Meepo is to go, uh, you stack the Wraith Bands, you get Treads, you buy an E-Blade. That's usually what people rush. Uh, they get it quite early. You want to be aiming to farm hard and get it around 12 to 13 minutes. Uh, after that, they'll pick up either a Blink Dagger if they feel like they need it. If they don't, if they're doing fine without it, they'll get a... A Scardy and tank up and then they'll just go high ground with an Aegis. So Nisha plays this lane really interestingly. Uh, he's very aggressive. He also plays for CS uh, quite quite a lot. Sometimes you see Meepo players and they'll just kind of do the take what you can get strat. Uh, the, you, you know they might go right for the range creep at the very beginning, hit it like twice like that and then just poof and take that. That's what, that's what you'll see some people do in the first uh, wave sometimes. But Nisha actually kind of tries to contest. And he knows. He knows that Talon is going to use uh, Razor's there to secure the, the range creep. Because he doesn't have souls. He's gone raise level 1. Uh, so he, he moves he moves forward there. Towards Shadow Fiend. To avoid getting double raise. You do not want to take too much raise damage. I mean ideally on Meepo you, you don't want to get... Uh, you don't want to have to be bringing a cell because you can do like rotations with your Meepos in lane with your TP once you hit level 3. And 1 minute 40 is generally uh, the average time that you'll get your level 3 if your lane's going fine, if you're not being like completely denied and you didn't lose your range creep. So some Meepo players, what they will do is they'll just go and stack a camp uh, um, for the 2 minute mark. And because they'll focus on farm, right? They'll just prioritize themselves completely. Nisha, he just goes right for Shadowfin. And this was very surprising. I haven't seen an aggro uh, play like this in a long time. I remember Abed. I think he used to be quite an aggressive Meepo. Either way, I, I saw a couple of Meepo players who just go really aggro and just net. Uh, and poof, like as soon as they hit level 3. It's, it's honestly quite rare nowadays because Ransack is so good. Uh, players have been going uh, Poof and Ransack and then ult at level 3 because the Ransack allows you to trade and be aggro in lane. But Nisha just, just goes in. 
he's not gonna get kills on Tanner like this, and, and I think he knows that, but he's forcing uh, Tanner to buy regen. He's making it so that he's a threat in lane. And on top of that, something that's very important that I delayed on talking about until now is that he has rune control on Meepo, and he'll, he'll keep uh, having rune control throughout this whole laning stage, and I think it's a very key part uh, of him winning the lane and making sure that Tanner can't rotate and do stuff in the lanes. Um, and, and I think an illusion rune is probably like the strongest rune you can get on Meepo. And Nishra demonstrates exactly why. He's able to just walk up to Tanner, net, poof, do loads of damage, and at base is one of the illusions that he got uh, and sent home. And he can just send, he can just poof his Meepo to the illusion. That's a really amazing interaction. And uh, just comes back to lane with two high health, high HP and healthy Meepos. And that's like, that's game winning. Allowing you to just go full ham on your opponent mid, lose as much HP as you feel like, and then come back with for free and you still have your TP scroll. It's so powerful. So Nisha makes really good use of that illusion rune at level, minute two. You'll see right now he sent a Meepo bot to go check for the rune, and he gets it. And, and that's the that's the beauty of his hero. He's so efficient, and Nisha plays with Meepo really well. He stacks a camp uh, right next to the rune, takes the rune, stays in lane and lasts it. So at the same time, if we look at his lasts, it's it's actually uh, very on par with his SF, but net worth wise. He's he's 600 gold ahead already. And now he's uh, level 5, he has 3 points in poof, and he can just jungle. He has everything he needs to jungle. He's tried going aggressive on SF, we saw him throw it out earlier and it missed. But he has enough now. And, and this, is, this is a very key important thing on Meepo to know, is to when to just go and farm. Uh, a lot of Meepos will kind of stick around in a lane for too long. He actually played Meepo in another game at this tournament, we play, uh, Tug of War, and he was playing off lane Meepo, and uh, I think he had one point in poof, and he realized the off lane wasn't worth it for him, and he just went and juggled. But yeah, Nisha's so good. He he takes he takes a camp with a Meepo, so he's farming. He's always farming. He takes a camp with one Meepo, and he sends the other one to the enemy rune, knowing that he is going to be stronger, have more levels, more items, he has his Wraith Bands, he has more than anyone else. He can just safely go to that rune and take it. <laughs> and then SF just walks up and gives him a kill. And he stood there knowing that Tanner's going to go and check for this. And, and then he just goes right back to farming. He takes the medium camp, he goes back to mid, he takes the wave, he goes back to a medium camp, he farms. He's just upkeeping his farm at all times. And he's moving his Meepos around separately and doing stuff. You'll see right now, he looks at the clock, he sees six minutes coming up. It's time to check for runes. He sends one Meepo bot, one Meepo top. He cannot let SF take runes. You don't want to give him any way back into this game. He's going to get gone on here by three heroes. But Oracle uses his Q and he knows that he is absolutely safe. The enemy do not have stuns. The only thing stopping him from leaving a, a fight or a gank is Beastmaster Raw Chrono and uh, Oracle's Q. That, that's pretty much it. And at this point in the game, you're not having those two ults in the game. You just have the Oracle Q. And look, he's going to use it again. And look, he's just free to leave. Absolutely free. There's no threat posed. Uh, he just He's just going to leave out. And, and this is uh, something you should take note of when you play Meepo as well, because it means you can do this rotation technique. Uh, I don't know if it's used this game. I know Nisha's done it before. Most high uh, high skill Meepo players, pretty much all pros, know how to do it. It's where you just you're in a fight and you just TP one Meepo home, and you uh, th you'll you you do this when you're at least level ten. So you have three Meepo, and then you'll just keep fighting with two Meepo. And when one of those two Meepo gets low HP, uh, you'll send that Meepo back to the base where the other Meepo is, re who's regen to full HP. And then you'll bring the full HP one back into the fight. You can basically just infinitely uh, cycle your Meepos in a fight. If the opponent doesn't have stuns, they have zero way to deal with this. And you can just basically win a fight for free off the back of it. Anyway, Nisha is he's doing great. He actually found a jelly in the jungle just now and used it on both of his Meepos. I, I don't think that was a good thing to do. I don't think Meepo benefits from royal jelly. Uh... 
Neutral items are kind of weird on Meepo because the clones don't get them. Honestly, you're kind of hoping to find something like a Van Brace when you're playing Meepo because... Or like an Ocean Heart. Something you just give stats. Because those stats get get given over to the uh, the clones. But yeah, I mean, I I think honestly it's just really nice how, how Nisha plays this game with his clone. Uh, like pre-level 10, he has basically split them up to farm different cabs, split them up to farm blades, split them up to get runes, split them up to... Uh, Secure areas just he's I Don't think he's made any kind of misstep this game and he's farming amazingly. He's over 1k ahead of Everyone else in the game right now, and it's only eight minutes. He's level nine. He's gonna hit level 10 and then yeah, he might look to start uh, Killing heroes, but most of all you basically just want to reach your first item. You're not desperate to To go and fight and die, you know the enemy while they don't have amazing control for Meepo, he can still die. And I think soon... Uh, I'm, not, I'm not sure when exactly, but he, he will die to a... 4-man rotation? It's pretty insane that they have to commit that many heroes, and they do commit like 2 ultimates to it. But you have to when it comes to Meepo, this hero is... something you can't just let sit. Uh, because... He will, he will carry the game, he will end it. The enemy don't have uh, any counters, any real counters. Uh, so... Nipper on a bit of a timer here. I and mean, he's just gonna farm. Uh, until he feels good. I've actually seen a lot of Meepos buying the Ghost Scepter first. Uh, in a lot of Meepo games. It gives... 5 stats to everything. It's not ideal to buy first. Generally, you do really want to get the Eagle Song first. I think Nisha's uh, free farming here, so he's happy to just go for that. He doesn't feel the need for a Ghost Scepter. You can see uh, here he's going to get uh, ganked by four. There's nothing you can really do when you get Roared and SF vaulted, but I mean they've committed so many alts now that he can do whatever he feels like. Oh. When he respawns. And Void's now use Chrono as well, which basically means any fight's free. There's no roll, there's no Chrono, there's no SF ult. He TPs to the tier 2 tower, he's gonna try and join the fight, but he, just, he gets there a little bit late. But he knows he can just farm freely now. And that's important, just... Keeping on farming, I think a lot of players, especially low MMR, uh, they, they might start chasing kills, they might just stop farming, they might start running around, they might start looking for stuff. But like, the thing that that separates the low MMR players from the high MMR players is the high MMR players are always farming. I've been watching a lot of offlane, uh, offlane replays lately, and you'll just see like Resolution playing Beastmaster and he's just the highest net worth in the entire game because he just keeps farming. He, just, he, he knows exactly how to rotate into fights and then when to just go back and start hitting jungle creeps again and pushing out lanes and, and taking the right camps and stuff. Nisha, uh, when he was playing his Meepo in the off lane and he w uh, had to leave and he had proof level 1, he, he worked his way through the jungle from top, uh, this he was on Radiant, from top to bot. And he started taking Ancients when he was level 4? And Meepo is really good at that. Meepo can take Ancients if it's... Uh, for the most part, actually, he's very good. He, uh, the purple ones are very, very nice to run into because Poof takes care of them so easily you can farm them. And you want to farm Ancients. Ancients have a higher drop rate for neutral items. Uh, ancients give more gold XP than your average uh, neutral creep. If you can farm them, you should be farming them. And Meepo is very good at farming uh, Ancient Camps. But yeah, so you, what you'll see, and what's good, is usually Meepo players will just send two Meepos to farm together, farm the harder uh, stuff. And then they'll leave a main Meepo farming either a lane, or farming, or hanging around their team or something, or just playing closer to, to people so they can take part if need be. Uh, usually they send the two Meepos to the bottom, yeah, this is on Radiant, assume it's reflected the, in a mirror for oh, Dyer, but... They'll have the two Meepos farming the big jungle, because there's more camps and it's easier to clear it. And they'll farm the triangle or smaller jungle uh, with the main one. And you'll see he's gonna get a 13 minute E-blade, which is really good. 
He's miles ahead. He's now 2k net worth uh, above everyone else. Anyway, this fight's gonna happen, and Nisha just backs off because he knows that SF is gonna all end, and it puts him in a bad position. And now it's down. He doesn't have a lot to be afraid of, other than a... Well, no, there's nothing he has to be afraid of. He knows the enemy's expended their cooldown, so he can go in. Sometimes playing as Mipo, it's quite important to... Let your team bait big spells, so you can go in. Like, look at this. His team goes in for him and starts a fight. SF is forced to BKB and use ult. And now Nisha can go in and kill the SF. If he ran in with his team, he faces getting feared, he faces getting chrono, he faces taking his whole HP and, and magic damage and just dying straight up. Instead his team run in, <laughs> get it, and he's good. And and that's and sometimes you just have to do that on Meepo. You can't be the tank of your team every time. Obviously you don't want to go too hard. You don't want to watch your team go in and just die as four and then be standing there afterwards because you're not going to follow that up. But, yeah. This game, Nisha didn't go for Blink Dagger. And I don't blame him for it. I think that uh, Secret in a really good position. Uh, I don't think they need to particularly jump anyone. They have catch in the form of Batrider, Pango can just go in, all Matoma Man on Ricky, he's gonna be finding people, it's it's totally fine, they have people that can catch. All Nisha needs to be able to do this game is tank through their spells. If he gets Chrono, he needs to be able to tank through it. Uh, you can see here, Nisha was farming top lane with his clones, and he had his ma main running around with his team, finding stuff. And then he joins the fight, and he feels really good right now, he's got Aegis, he knows he can just go in. He's gonna go in with absolutely no fear. Tanner holds his ult. He knows this. He knows he can't waste it right now. He knows they don't have the damage to kill Nisha. But it is gonna cost his teammates' life to not fear them away. But you, these are the really hard decisions that are being forced by this this Aegis on Meepo. Meepo Aegis is basically your win condition every time you play this hero. It lets you take complete map control, it lets you take high ground, it lets you just be this hero that your enemy know they have to kill twice. He's just gonna throw out nets. And now, like, now Tano's forced to use the ult and look what happened. Nisha's completely fine. He's a little bit on the low side, but he I mean, he has Aegis and now there's no SF uh, ult. And he's, he's just gonna TP home now. And heal up his Meepo, and then he's gonna be in the exact same spot that he was, right outside the enemy base, but he's gonna be full HP, and he's still gonna have his Aegis. And I think they win this game in the next couple of minutes, because there is absolutely nothing that Nip can do to stop Meepo. You can, he can just use Nets, or he can use Z-Blade to catch people. He's gonna throw a Tanner, Tanner's probably gonna be forced to BKB. And now there's no BKB SF, and what do they do? Now, now Nisha can just go high ground if he wants, there is... <laughs> Or no chrono. There's no SF fault. They can push the side lanes if they want. They can cut creeps. That's also something to note. Even though I've been talking about going high ground a lot, I think something that pros are very good at and very good at knowing uh, is, is when to not go high ground with Aegis. I think a lot of players will try and force a high ground and, and they can throw a, off it. Whilst Secret just kind of back a little bit and nip leave their base and now they're in a bad position, and they're gonna be punished for it. And this is a lot safer than trying to push into five heroes who are standing on their high ground who are in position. And Lelis gets popped down there onto the low ground, he's gonna die too, and now you just don't have two heroes. So you'll see they took two towers bot lane, and they just accrued more money, got more map control, got those little pickoffs when the enemy left the base. This is, this is basically GG. So I think if you're watching this, your main takeaway from this game should be uh, farming patterns, being efficient with your clones, especially pre-level 10. There's so much you can do pre-level 10. I think Nisha was absolutely incredible. He farmed really, really well. He won a lane that is typically not that favorable for Meepo. You just, yeah, you just need to take advantage of the fact that you have two heroes. Yeah, I hope this video was helpful at all. I hope you enjoyed my analysis. If you think I was wrong or just <laughs> saying something completely stupid, let me know. 
Nishu is such a good and fun Meepo to watch. I really have been enjoying uh, Team Secret dropping that for him. So, hope to see more in the future. They seem pretty happy about picking it uh, multiple times in tournaments. Sometimes with other pros, you see them take it out like once and it's like, oh, nice, it's their Meepo. Nisha's Ni just dolling it out. <laughs> Just over and over again. The, the people just don't ban Meepo against Team Secret, and I don't know why. Nisha's a Meepo player, guys. Just ban it. Especially with this lineup. I guess they had a lot of trust in Tanner. I'm not sure. But, uh, you definitely gotta ban Meepo. This lineup is not good enough. Yeah. Thank you for watching. I'm gonna go back to working on my next guidance video now. Peace.